I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. And we're going for a drive. The Refresh 23 Subaru Ascent. Premier without launch control. Traction off. Let's see if it holds at 6,000. Yes, uh, 5,100. 5, <laughs> CVT. Horsepower and torque. 260 horsepower, 277 pound-feet of torque from a turbo 2.4 liter four-cylinder boxer. So it's refreshed, it's got new looks, new tech, still a three-row. This one's got captain's chairs. Let's start off with, can Jacob fit in all the rows at six foot one and a half. I can obviously fit in the front row very comfortably. I can fit in the second row very comfortably. And I cannot very comfortably, basically at all, fit in the third row. And I can like kind of just barely fit, but it's like pretty uncomfortable. I think you need this car if you've got kids. Yeah, but it's nice to have USB ports in the back for all your kids, uh, all their toys and iPads and things. And cup holders. And you know, even though it's got like 19 cup holders, I guess half those cup holders can just be phone holders because isn't a cup holder really just a phone holder? And then we also have peasant blockers in the second row, which is awesome. Okay, but the thing is, so my friend looked at this car because they're going from a Forester up to an Ascent because like I said before, oh, classic. Sub Subaru people stay in the Subaru family because they just do. Yep. And with the super big attachment for twins in a stroller, it doesn't really fit in the very back with all the seats up, so one of the seats needs to be down. And at that point, I'm saying like, kind of just go minivan, right? For sure. Like, I feel like I'd want to go minivan over this for the amount of space. If I had three kids, two kids, this would probably be perfect. Yo, three kids, I'd probably go with like a Yukon Denali Extended or something like that. Yeah, an, ex an extended, one of the Tahoes would be nice, but like also minivans, you know, with like the go and go, yeah. like the deep stuff, like for that'd sure. be pretty sweet. Anyways, back to what this car is. Uh, do you like the color of the interior? The interior color is lovely. It's a uh, peanut butter-ish. Top trim only. I really like it. And it's Napa leather and it is very Napa-like. Okay, and then back to the seats. We have heated seats. And I was telling Jacob, these are the hottest seats. It burns your butt. And he's like, no, and he sat in it. And then he drove for like 10 minutes. Like, these seats are too hot. Yeah, they're way too you. hot. It gets you, it just it's, concentrates it's, it's all a, the heat. Yeah, but just it, right up your butthole. It's better too hot than not hot enough. Because you can then adjust it lower. Yeah, and even though it's through the touch screen, but it's always showing pretty much. This being the top trim, this is the only trim that gets you ventilated seats, so we do have that. And we got a heated steering wheel. Yeah. And then this newer infotainment, so the older Ascent that we drove had the small one, which I thought was the best Subaru infotainment of all time, and it had hard buttons, volume knob, tuning knob. This one has the volume knob, tuning knob, but it's got all of your climate into the infotainment, except for like up, down with the temperature. And then these buttons here, I couldn't find for defrost. Oh yeah. I was literally searching through the infotainment. I almost crashed three times. <laughs> but I guess once you buy the car, you learn where the buttons are. Yes, and then the thing was probably yelling at you to keep your eyes on the road because we have Subaru's eyesight system in this. Yeah, so it's, well, the eyesight is the driving, but I think this is face scan. Yeah, but it's all part of the same system. Yeah, so this, like if you look away for too long, it beeps, which I think is great because if you, you know, get distracted like this, keeps your eyes on the road. And this has the newer eyesight for driving radar cruise lane, keep the wider cameras, which I really liked in that um, legacy. No, yes, but also that other one that I drove last year in the snow. Forester. Yes. What's the what was the version? Yellow. Wilderness. Badge. Yes. Anyway, so that camera that watches your eyes is up here, where the old double screen used to be with the controller up here. That stuff is now built into the top of your tall infotainment, and you can go left and right, and you only have X modes for drive modes. No. Um, like sports sharp right Yeah, which is kind of ridiculous. So your drive modes sort of are buried in the infotainment and there's no hard buttons well, for them. Well, they're not buried. They're literally always visible. They're always there. Well, if you're in the uh, weather screen, then you're not visible. With a quick swipe, they're there. No, because if you're in the left swipe, you have to go five swipes over. You can't just go one to the other side. Yeah. Anyway, Anyways. Who, so, who, who, I, I, I couldn't even get stuck in that Forester last year, so like you, you usually you'll, don't get stuck. You'll probably be okay, but it's kind of weird to have the X modes there, and then you can't use the X modes over a certain speed, so they're just grayed out. And then, so it's vertical tablet style, which means we got vertical Apple CarPlay, and it's only wireless. Like you can't be wired, which is so annoying. It's really weird that they so, chose to do that. Like, holy, what are you, a BMW? Like, relax. Yeah. Or a, or a Supra? Same thing, right? Ah, <laughs> good one. Okay, and then my least favorite part. So now we finally have a 360 camera. Only in the top trim, once again. Okay, when you go to the reverse, 
since it's vertical screen, everyone who has a vertical screen has pretty much screwed up, I think, for except for the Mach E or something. It's so small, like it is like the three. The reverse camera is the size of the one in Jacob's Raptor, which is in, in my in rear, rear, rear view mirror. mirror. It's like and two then, inches. And then the 360 camera, whatever, it's there too. It's small, but then if you click the view button for the camera, it'll switch it up. But then it's still just one or the other. Like you know how in Volvos, if you only have like the 360 camera, that you can't see behind you. And you're like, yo, there could be a car like two feet away, but I won't notice it. Yeah, and then when this thing's spinning around, it blacks out the screen in between the transitions. Yeah, that, I'm like, what is this? Yeah, so when you're in park and you click the view button because you know you want to make sure you're in a parking spot nice and centered, then it starts doing this like weird comparison to the egg mode in Toyota. So you actually need to put your car into drive if you want to be able to see the 360 camera without this dumb animation. It's kind of crazy. Honestly, Subaru, you guys are like really bad at this. Yes, your previous one was better. You guys are just getting worse and worse at infotainments and I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. But if you need a product tester, hit me up on LinkedIn. I'll, I'll help you guys out. And if you're shopping for one of these, tsp.truecar.com discounted price offers. Or if you're shopping for an alternative, like a Hyundai Palisade, which has a way better 360 camera system, you can also get that on TrueCar. Yeah, I mean, there's like good stuff about this car. Like the sound system is Harman Kardon. It's really, really nice. And driving it, I really enjoy putting around town. Actually, I don't think I've floored it yet, so let me... I mean, there's, there's things to, to desire about it. You, you behind the wheel, we'll talk more about that. No brake boost. We're gonna actually shift gears. I was better off the line. Oh yeah. Yeah, oh, oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah. Work your magic, CVT. So it's got a CVT. Uh, don't really like it, especially combined with the throttle tuning because we can't change any of the drive modes. We only have normal mode. So I find it to be way too touchy. It's just, it's always kind of gear hunting fake gears. I've noticed that I've always been going like a little faster than I should be in like 40 zones. Like, I guess it just, it gets away from me. Okay. I could see how it would because the throttle tuning is so sensitive. It's, it's just actually weird. really it's, annoying. It's, it's weird, but it is like pleasant to drive around. Like I had a nice time, but I also, I guess I realized that I did not floor it at all until right now. Yep. It's uh, it's not good when you floor it. But it's good to have a car that doesn't force you to floor it. Cause if this was a 911. <laughs> yes or a Cayenne Turbo GT. Or literally anything else that would have been flooring it constantly. <laughs> <laughs> and once you are going, if you floor it, oh my God, that's borderline dangerous. Like that, yeah. that takes forever. But I, I did get through a whole week without it. Yeah, because did you drive on the highway? I did. Okay. I just took it, I just took it super easy. Dude, dude, it was Christmas break. I was coasting. Fair enough. Just having a good time. But we do have paddles. So, I mean, yeah, simulate a I, bunch of gears. I also did not touch those at all. <laughs> Nothing's happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, powertrain is not the best. It does feel okay-ish. For being sporty, I'm sure the powertrain is great. It for feels getting slower. Not stuck. It feels slower than a Hyundai Palisade, which I already find to be underpowered. So this is even more underpowered. But, but does this handle well? Because we know people buying this want to go to the racetrack. Well, let's find out through Cliche Corner and, oh yeah, dude, the turn-in is pretty damn good. I can hear the tire squeal just a little bit. It is winter. Oh, there's a bit of understeer at first and then it kind of catches around. It is obviously all wheel drive, Subaru's symmetrical system. It's pretty decent. Can we give all the credit to the tires? Of course we can. Viking Contact 7s, Continental recommended tire for this vehicle. I was driving this around with the tires in like the little snowstorm that we got that completely crippled our airport. Yes. And uh, it, was, it was really nice in like the icy conditions. Yeah, so this car obviously drives pretty decently. It's got a bunch of body roll. The steering is really light. It's kind of actually enjoyable how light it is. I could see how you would thoroughly enjoy this driving in the city with like who cares attitude. Yeah, you just, I just need to get around like if I want to have fun, I drive my Fiat. Yes. And if I need to get anywhere and call stuff and people safely. You drive this because your Fiat's going to be broken at the shop. It hasn't been broken in a while. I drive this because I don't dare to put anyone in the backseat of that Fiat. <laughs> <laughs> and the suspension is also very, very comfortable. I would say even more comfortable than a Hyundai Palisade. Drive half on the gravel, do the Yuri test. It's good. No drive mode, so it doesn't really matter. Heck yeah. Yeah, and it's nice and quiet in here too, other than the engine being fairly coarse if you're not really on it. It's nice and quiet. Yeah, that's good. It's like, it's almost, this is like Acura almost, luxury? No. no, not even. But it's definitely more than like Honda or Toyota. The yeah. new the new Honda stuff is really good. From previous gen Honda stuff, yes. Current gen Honda stuff, no. Hey, you wanna see something cool? What's that? Oh. You can see the kids, except 
It's a big, super small distractor, so I don't like that. Yeah. It also has cabin talk, so you can like talk to people in the back too. Oh, that is a new feature, I think. I need a visor test real quick. You don't have to do one. I'll, I'll do it. Myself. I'll do it. It Three, says slide. Two, one. Full pass. Like some greasy slide oh, too. Greasy. Thick. And then uh, cup holders. They're actually really shallow, which is perfect for a small cup. So shout out cup holders. Yeah, no problem. And then driving position is great. I got my elbows on the steering wheel. Elbows on the steering wheel. Everything's really soft in here. Your right knee fits. Yeah, right knee fits. So On that like completely. Six nine. Exactly. Well, you know, it's probably nine. gonna fix that. What's that? Six ninety. Oh yeah, the ninety's coming out soon. So stay tuned for that. And we have really minimal gloss black in here. There's a lot of like decent looking wood-ish stuff, and then some hard plastics and some leather-like surfaces. Yeah, I like it. I think it's just like a nice, normal, unoffensive interior. You and know this, what? This would, color really pops. You know what would bring this up to a luxury level? A set of tux mats. Yeah, I mean, it's better than these carpet mats that I have been getting covered in the snow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so go to tuxmat.com slash the straight pipes. Check out what they have available for your vehicle. Would that make this an accurate level pro uh, luxury? It would definitely Maybe bring it Rolls up. Maybe Rolls-Royce? Maybe. Bentley? <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's talk about the looks. I think this looks okay because they've refreshed the front end the most. The headlights are pretty decent looking. I think that to me the biggest difference is like it's a huge grill instead of like a small grill and a bigger opening at the bottom like the old descent. And I prefer the look of old descents more. Those weird bottom chrome vent things in the lower bumper look kind of interesting. The ones from the CRV. Yeah, and or is uh, it that pilot. They're also from like uh, Von Gittin Jr.'s uh, Mustangs, except in the grill, which they've now sort of adopted in the new generation Mustang, which is interesting. I can't wait to try one. <laughs> And then uh, as for body lines, I think it's like exactly the same. I, re I really can't tell the difference. They can't change the body lines in like a refresh. And then there's like chrome door handles, the taillights feel like the same. Like nothing else really feels different. No, let's take a listen to the outside. Turns out this actually has launch control, which is pretty crazy if you put it in park and then rev it the hell up and then do it neutral drop. Just kidding, don't actually do that because you'll probably void your warranty and explode the CBT. Yeah, and they'll know if you did that because maybe it's got a tracker hooked up to it like the one I found that fell out while driving. Yes. <laughs> and right now we've got a weird creak develop in the dash all of a sudden. It sounds like the windshield to me. Something's creaking though. It's really annoying. Hopefully it delaminates and pops off. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know if that's a quality issue with the Ascent or just with this particular one. Maybe it's the weather, but probably not. Anyways, things I do like about this that I forgot to talk about, here we have AC power, and guess what? We have a three-prong. Three-prong, baby. And if we go to the trunk, we've got a trunk close button and a lock, lock button. button. That's good. Take that, MDX Type S. Right, that was the one that didn't have that stuff. I think so. Or did have the lock button. And what else do we have back there? We can tow up to 5,000 pounds with this if you had a trailer hitch on it. Yeah, that'd be good. Towing is good. That's as much as a Hyundai Palisade slash Kia Telluride. Oh. So I think that's it with this car. I think it's time we get to the price. The lowest price ascent that you can buy is 40995 Canadian. And the most expensive being this one, 53995 If you already have Subarus, this is a no-brainer because that's what Subaru people do. And if you don't, then I would highly recommend a Hyundai Palisade or a Kia Telluride over this. But those are difficult to get. You'd have to like look on tsp.truecar.com, see who has them in stock. How about CX-90? We don't know anything about it, but we'd really like the CX-9. I do, so I assume CX-90 is gonna be, be like so much sicker. Yeah, maybe wait for a CX-90 if you can. And then I guess this or a minivan, if you have three kids, like just go minivan. Don't, oh, even, yeah. don't even second guess it. Like you don't need all wheel drive. Like you'll be fine pretty much going anywhere with like a front wheel drive minivan. Yeah, I think so. And then like the Tahoe is the extended. Yeah, yeah. But that's like pretty big money. Can you get one of those for like cheaper? No. What's the cheapest you can get one for? What I don't the know. Price? Check on tsp.truecar.com. Discounted price offers. Yes, yeah, so it's like probably at the bottom of my list. Yeah. Fix your 360 camera, Subaru. And uh, fix the CVT and the transmission tuning and a couple more things. What was the company that got rid of it and went back to automatic? Mazda. Pat Fun. Or Pat Fun. Fun. <laughs> Sh Nissan. Shout out Nissan. Yeah, it works. Ah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Subaru, you can do it too. You can get rid of these things and it's, slap in some autos. It's okay. We'll be nice about it. <laughs>